I'd like to examine John 14, 21. And we'll see Jesus uh, says the following, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. And I think his wording is very interesting. He talks about the Father will love them, and I will show myself to them. And so when we enter into a relationship with Jesus Christ by faith, we enter into a life of obedience. We, we receive the command of God. We are to repent of our sins and turn away from doing evil. As, as it says in uh, Psalm 34, turn from evil and do good. Or that might be Psalm 37. I think it says a similar thing in both Psalms. But that is basically what the life of repentance and faith is. We turn from evil and we start doing good. And what is the greatest thing we can do is to follow Christ and to live his way for our lives and to obey the commands of God. Uh, for it says, For if anyone desires to see many good days, let him turn from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, but his face is set against all who do wrong. So, plain and simple, we turn from evil, we do good, we seek peace and pursue it, and we seek ultimately the source of peace itself. Jesus Christ is referred to as the Prince of Peace. And so, we see similar themes throughout Scripture, and this is one thing I love about Scripture, is it always interprets Scripture with Scripture. Scripture is full of insight, and sometimes if you don't have as much clarity on one particular verse of Scripture, you cross-reference with other parts of Scripture, and you find that greater clarity comes into light. For example, uh, we see Jesus earlier on, uh, on the Sermon of the Mount, or the Beatitudes, he teaches about, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay, we got that. Uh, Psalm 11, 7 says, for the Lord is righteous. He loves the right, he loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. So we see kind of Jesus say something similar here. We see Jesus first say, whoever has my commands. Well, how do we get the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, we first have to hear the gospel. We first have to hear the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, as Romans 10, 17 says. So, and Paul basically says, how will they, they believe unless someone preaches to them? So first we have to have, oftentimes, someone preach the gospel to us. Tell us about the, what the word of God has to say. We hear the commands of God. That's the first step. Now, that's why it's so important that we share the gospel and we preach the word of God, is because people need to hear if they are going to enter into a saving relationship with Jesus Christ. They don't just catch it by osmosis. They don't just, you know, people don't just, I asked this one guy one time, so tell me, when you were you born again? Because he said he was Christian, and I asked him, okay, so tell me your story. Tell me when you were born again. And he's like, oh, I was, uh, I was born a Christian. I came out of my mother a Christian. I'm like, uh... Well, and then I had to ask him, well, why then does Jesus say you must be born again? And he just gets this perplexed look like uh, he didn't know how to respond. And so that's when I had an opportunity to share with him what Jesus taught about being born again. And so, not to get too much into my personal encounters with people or stories like that, but, you know, I think it proves that it, it, it helps build a framework for what we're talking about here. we got to share the gospel with people. we got to sometimes come across people who might not understand fully, and we've got to share the truth with them in a biblical, respectful way. Of course, we don't just bang on doors and kick doors down. If somebody's not interested in hearing the gospel, we shouldn't just force our way upon them and, and tie them to a chair and say, you're going to listen to Scripture. No, no, that's not the approach we take. But, you know, we do share the gospel. We can... Uh, throw it out there and let those who want to hear it partake in hearing it. And so uh, and so it says, whoever has my commands, and how do we first come to know the commands of Jesus? We first believe in him and receive the gospel, of course. Then he adds, and keeps them, loves me. So he's saying, whoever my, has my commands and keeps them, loves me. And so how do we demonstrate our love for the Lord? How do we demonstrate that we truly belong to him? We 
both have his commands, we educate ourselves, what does God desire, and then we keep the commands of God. And that's a true act of faith right there. It's not just enough to claim to have Jesus as Lord and know the Bible. We could memorize scripture all day long, yet if we do not put it into practice, we are showing we do not love the Lord. Uh, we ought to show we truly love Jesus by keeping his commands. Jesus said that himself. And to the one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. And one of the ways we really develop closeness with the Lord is loving him, of course, and obeying his teachings. As a result, he will show himself to us. There are moments we may not be experiencing the closeness of the Lord that we should have. You know, let's say we are Christians. Let's say we are truly born again. We're saved. There's been a new work in our lives. The Lord has changed so much about us. But, like, let's say we get off track. We're living in a particular area of disobedience or unaddressed sin in our lives. And that will definitely create a barrier to us being able to clearly hear the word of God or experience his presence. It's like if you have an argument with your wife or your husband and you guys are not on good terms right then and there, that's going to affect the intimacy you have in a marriage until you deal with whatever your, your issues was. Until you really, you know, let's say you wronged your wife or you wronged your husband and you just have to eat crow and apologize, so to speak. You just have to say, you know what, honey, I blew it. I did. I hurt you. I'm so sorry. I'm, let me make it up to you. You know, kind of that, you know. And that restores the connection there in a relationship. Or if you have a friend and something has happened and you have to, you know, apologize for something, you become aware that you did. And that helps clear up the connection so you can experience closeness with them again. And so that's the same case with our relationship with God. Many ask, why confess our sins? Why, if the Lord has already forgiven us and given us new life, if we're already saved just because of his grace, you know, why confess? Well, you know, the same reason you confess to your wife when you've done something to hurt her feelings, or, or if you've done something wrong to your husband and you have to apologize, or your friend, or any close person in your life, you know, confession is a regular part of our human relationships. We have to sometimes apologize. We have to sometimes say, you know what? I did something wrong, and I know what I did wrong, and I'll tell you why I did, why it was wrong. And, you know, that's how we really clear up the connections to have healthy relationships with human beings. You know, but we can't think God is any less sophisticated than human beings. Actually, he's more complex. But sometimes we put God on an unsophisticated level, when he is actually much more intelligent and sophisticated than we are, and we can't, we can't do that to him. We've got to realize that God is a very relational being, and he wants a close relationship with us, but we sometimes don't understand what it takes to really have that closeness, and we've got to deal with unaddressed sin, unaddressed things in our lives that he's telling us to give up. And whenever we find this is the case, and address whatever area we are not being fully obedient in. we got to address that so that we can restore the connection and experience close fellowship again, okay? And we resolve to repent of whatever it is and then live obediently. And then we can often, since him, quote, show myself to them in a more meaningful, personal way. But... If we're living in sin, if we're doing something we know is not pleasing him, don't expect him to be feel real close. You know, that is one thing we ought to go to first. If we feel like the Lord is distant, we should first ask ourselves, well, you know, am I doing something that displeases or grieves him in my life? You know, that should be the first go-to. But you know, it's not always, sometimes God feels distant just because he feels distant. And it may not be any personal sin in our lives, but we still got to check for that, you know, uh, but, you know, sometimes God is testing our faith with his silence. Sometimes God is doing a lot of things through silence. But, you know, uh, always something we should remember not to overlook is, well, is there any area in my life that I have not fully surrendered to obey Jesus Christ in? Because if we can find something, then that might likely be the culprit right there. And so, if we are not dealing with sin when it is a problem, that will become a barrier between us hearing the Lord's voice clearly and experiencing that deep and personal relationship he wants to give us. And 
I hope you found this uh, message encouraging. God bless.